Muy queridos my very dear hermanos y hermanas congresistas. sisters and brothers. Qué alegría poderme encontrar What con pleasure to be able to meet en you in, this, del mundo this, in these distant lands of the vast Precisamente earth en el geography, just right here in the very heart of Catholic and Christian en esta East Asia. Y in this important and beautiful city of Cebu, Reina del Sur, the queen la isla city of the South Island, custodian island of the holy Donde child of Cebu, where, the faith de España, earth, where faith arrived from Oriente, New Spain to the Pearl of the Old, este which is today the headquarters of the 51st International Eucharistic Congress, en nosotros, with the slogan, Esperanza de Gloria. Christ in you. The hope of glory. Traigo para todos ustedes, I bring to each of you, y hermanas, dear brothers and sisters, un a very special and warm greeting desde la casita sagrada del Tepeyac, house of Tepeyac, donde la preciosa niña y celestial señora Santa María de Guadalupe sweet lady of the heavens, quedó milagrosamente estampada en la tilma burda y rala and de heard about the San Juan sons Diego of the Indian Saint Juan Diego Cuatrapatsi. Beyond the immense seas of the Pacific, may you kindly receive this greeting on behalf of her, the Lady of Cuatrapatsi, and of those who daily work in her sacred little house, strive, striving to meet you, to him who is the most true God, for whom we live, the creator of people, owner of the closeness and immediacy, the Lord of heaven, the Lord of the earth, Jesus Christ, our living bread from heaven, with our hope of glory. Vengo, queridos congresistas, My dear brothers and sisters, members of this Congress, I come as a messenger of that which in the Guadalupe event, which the humble Juan Diego, the Indian, presided over with the Pentecostal of America, who opened our eyes to the gifts of the Holy Spirit at a time when the petals of faith opened before us, bringing their perfume and their word, that is, His beloved will, which is nothing but the same as that proclaimed in the Holy Scriptures, do whatever He tells you to do. Thus giving life to the missionary mandate of his beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, proclaiming, proclaiming his death and resurrection through the joyful celebration of his Paschal mystery, Eucharistic memorial, pledge of our future glory, as proclaimed at this Congress. Those of us who have received this honor to exercise the pastoral ministry, priests and laity, 57 priests, um, laity about 500 or 600, these we have before them an immense task, which often gladdens the heart for the effort undertaken sometimes bathed in the bitter wine of our human limitations, but always with the hope and putting in each of our activities the best of our talents at the service of the gospel and at the service of our brothers with the task of being the sweet and gentle face of our dear Lady of Guadalupe, whose picture you see here, right in front of me, the Holy Lady of Guadalupe. Indeed, dear brothers and sisters, I have come to tell you about her, inspired for this assignment by this wonderful and inexhaustible source of our Christian life the Holy Eucharist, source and summit of all activity of the Church. 
of all of our efforts, endeavors, and hopes of evangelization and catechesis, of pastoral mission and projects of social and cultural activities, to make known to all the people who come there, that is some 20 million per year, the motherly love of God through the merciful and compassionate look of our beautiful and heavenly Saint Mary, Lady of Guadalupe, our mother, mother of all men, of all those who are here together as one, as has already been for many centuries for you, my dear brothers and sisters, who are pilgrims on this archipelago, the Philippines. You, my Philippine brothers and sisters, are also Guadalupe. In you flows the blood of this precious lady because we were born in her lap. That and nothing less, we were born in her lap and we bear the blood of this sweet lady. Well, before speaking of evangelization and popular religiosity in the most important Marian shrine in Mexico and America, where we worship since 1531, the perfect image of the perfect Virgin Holy Mary of Guadalupe, mother of the most true God, miraculously imprinted on the crude and sparse tilma of his apostle, the seer, the messenger, the confidant, the Indian San Juan Diego. Because indeed, it should be noted that popular religiosity is an element of cultural identity and is inherent to the religious phenomenon. Phenomena. The various forms of religiosity constitute the heterogeneity of the manifestations of the same religion, influenced by social, cultural, and psychological factors of all kinds. So, this issue which we are discussing today is not something that is reserved to the people of Latin America and the Philippines, but very well also of other parts of the world, such as the Old World, Europe, or Africa, or Australia. My friends, popular Catholic Christianity marks the physiognomy of our Latin American churches, our peoples, particularly, as I repeat, in Latin America and the Philippines. Everybody looks at us and at the Filipinos because of our religiosity, because of our sense of God. Let's not forget that religion is an anthropological phenomenon. And therefore, it is quite complex to achieve a clear definition, since there are various cultural con concepts of the subjective experience which is religion. In its Latin etymolo etymology, the term religion refers to the set of beliefs or doctrines about the divinity of the feelings of reverence and fear of it, of moral standards for individual and social behavior, and of rituals and practices, particularly prayer and sacrifice for worship. Other meanings are equally related to the divine or the sacred, namely, the virtue that moves us to give God the worship due, the profession and the observance of certain spiritual doctrines. Therefore, friends, religio means everything related to the culture, to the sacred life, to the scrupulous observance of divine laws and regulations and so forth. However, 
it may be related also to the Latin verb religo, meaning to tie or to attach. The sense here is figurative or symbolic, since that union or that bond is not physical, but is rather ontological. The same can be said for the term relego, which means collecting, grouping again, to go over again, to reread or review. All these meanings are interpreted as the human relationship to ideas, beliefs or experiences of spiritual or divine nature. Now, my friends, if this is understood as religion, then religiosity, as per its Latin origin, religiositas, religiositatis, refers to a religious act and to the practice of such an act with eagerness and zeal in fulfilling one's obligations. Thus, my dear fellow, fellow con Congress members, religiosity is the practice, the experience and the observance of beliefs, principles, moral standards, and the worldview of a religion. And if to that we were to add the popular definition, the definition of what is popular, that is to say, such an anthropolo anthropological and social experience, as well as theological, of course, concerns the people. We extend the understanding, therefore, to the cultural identity of religiosity. Religiosity as folklore is but the knowledge of the people as religious expressions. sociologist and theologian Luis Maldonado said, and no doubt my fellow brethren have read about this Spanish sociologist and theologian Luis Maldonado, he said it characterize, characterizes the religiosity of the people and in a way that is popular as a reality opposed to the official reality, since it seeks simpler and more direct relationships with the divine. That is, it attempts to set aside certain overly intellectual schemes, discursive methods that constrict and paralyze its strength, the people's instinctive and emotional impulses, and on the other hand, it seeks to circumvent clerical impositions which, rather than mediation, are a wall or a straitjacket. Indeed, my friends, this is religiosity or religiousness, the most popular that is lived day to day in this most important sanctuary of the Americas. And I would say further, we have in fact brought it to the Vatican. Because, because of their faith in Tepeyac, 20 million people come to the Virgin of Guadalupe. And in the Vatican, 6 million people come because of it. I'm not talking about tourism. I'm talking about pilgrims. Tourism is another matter. Now, for 24 years, I have been coming to the sanctuary of Guadalupe as the one responsible for the preaching there. And I am witness of the many religious expressions that aim to be simple and straightforward not overly intellectual, without great dramatic developments or discursive methods. That's true, but at the risk of becoming a mere ritualistic, magical, or superstitious practice in an empty ritual without commitment. But this is where our challenge, precisely here, where our challenge comes. 
that is to bring the right into living experience, that is to say, to transcendence, to communion with the true living God. <coughs> this is where evangelization, which illuminates, purifies, and powers these expressions of popular religiosity comes in. Each of these practices, in essence, looks for the meaning of life and its ultimate meaning. Therefore, I believe that we should not look for the existence of God, but that of man himself, who finally brings us to the existence of God. In the introduction to the work Popular Religiosity Pastoral and Theology, co-authors Carlos Amigo, Archbishop of Seville, and Ángel Gómez of the Diocesan Secretariat of Liturgy of Seville, said this, which I believe is very important. The religious celebrations of a popular nature are real expressions of faith in their own way, that to stay for the believers, and for others, the agnostics, but for them, they're only a cultural, sociological, important phenomenon. So these two extremes debate. Some deny any religious content in the Christian origins of these phenomena, that is to say, the agnostics, and others, the believers instead, say that this is the true and only way to live their faith authentically. Therefore, popular religiosity is the visible expression of the religious mystery. Let's not forget that one of the characteristics of the church is precisely that of the mystery, mysterion. That is, that the very spirit of God is acting beyond what we can verify with our sensitive expressions. Ideological prejudice, superficiality in knowledge, other interests in religion, contempt of simplicity, pastoral abandonment, etc., lead to misunderstanding and often to contempt of the living faith of catechesis, of liturgy, and of evangelization, which is precisely popular religiosity in its visible expression. Religious expressions that we touch daily at the shrine of Our Lady of Guadalupe calls us astonishment, surprise, admiration. But above all, they arouse in each of us an openness to transcendences. The deep feelings of respect for the various manifestations of piety of the people, walking with some hope, even amid the many difficulties of daily life. Let us say, a way of understanding our relationship with God without many questions, without many rules or precepts, as they live it. Indeed, it is the simple people who teach us, sometimes priests, Yes, it's true. The priest does have that task. But, my dear friends, it is the people, the people of the faithful people who teach us, who lead us. At the recent Observatory on Popular Religiosity held at the Catholic University Lumen Gentium, Mexico City, on Friday, 30 October 2015, Father Martin Cisneros Carbonero, a missionary of Guadalupe, said, and I think this is very important, he said that the popular religion or religiosity was sacred ground 
not only by in the interdisciplinarity of the theme, but also because of its world view. To understand it, I repeat, to understand it, to measure it and live it, he said, we have to enter the world view of the people, seeing how they live their spirituality, brothers and sisters, and how we live. So, Father Cisnero said, we must go to the human heart. We must go to the center of the people's emotions. For religion is primarily a question of man, and man, therefore, eminently interdisciplinary. We need to enter through that sacred door. Popular religiosity today, my dear brothers and sisters, is but one. But I believe with different faces and different needs, but there is the religiosity of the peasant, of the indigenous, uh, of the bureaucrat, bureaucrat, of the intellectual, of the politician, and so forth. Each one lives a way to believe, a way of understanding God. Each one of these expressions of popular piety is rich in values, but it needs to be evangelized as each cultural level interprets the world and God. We cannot take from the people their expressions of faith unless we offer something better. Watch out, my dear friends, breath brother, preachers. I ask you this humbly. Let's not take away from the people their expressions of faith unless we offer them something better. Therefore, the church must recognize the different cultures and entertain dialogue with them. Dialogue with cultures which is extremely important precisely so that we can walk towards a true inculturation of the gospel, the gospel. That is to say, to find the seeds of the verb which are found in the cultures. We cannot tread on any culture. We should discover in them the very many manifestations of the verb. This is why John Paul II qualified the Guadalupe event as a perfect example of enculturated evangelization. Because precisely it started out from our Aztec culture. So as to from there transmit the life of God to others. Some people might find it repulsive in these forms. It might seem a reality which we have to overcome, an insufficient way of embracing God. The listening and the obedience which are characteristic of the scriptures. One great temptation of public, of popular religiosity, as I said, is precisely superstition. But superstition is an undesired derivation of religion. And the challenge that we face is to correct it. The people create expressions of faith and need to express their faith in an intuitive, mystical manner. In even as a community movement, so as to face the need of conversion and penitence without losing the light that the gospel of Jesus Christ brings us. Therefore, the church needs to purify, strengthen, and elevate 
all these manifestations of faith. The Directorium Popular Culture says that we need to desacramentize, not just respect popular religiosity, we need to purify it, we need to for strengthen it, we need to develop it. Lumens Indigencium, this consular document says, does not reduce the religious faith of any people. On the contrary, it assumes, it strengthens and promotes what is good in the abilities, in the wealth, and in the customs of every people. Therefore, responding to the capacity of these experiences to maintain open the bridge the bridge to transcendence. It is therefore not good that we diminish devotional life. On the con or even more so if those devotion are not being replaced by something else. Paul the Sixth said that popular religiosity can lead and lead to much good. Of course, not all in popular religion is clean, is clean or is gold. Neither is it trash or is it something to be discarded. We need to have Christian discernment to have a selective purification which through evangelization and through adequate catechesis makes use of those good parts from to, promotes them and promotes what is authentic and valid in religious expressions. The Directorium Popular in his number 61 describes popular religiosity as a treasure of God and God. It is a treasure of spiritual culture, a human experience of life and of piety as an attitude towards the good father, to his beloved son, to the Virgin Mary, mother of, Christ, of God, and towards the saints. The Directoro de Popularidad and Culture says that the source of popular religiosity will always be the Holy Spirit. And its permanent and expression is the expression of the gospel of Christ, which we see. If we read through this document, we will see the relationship of popular religiosity with liturgy with the liturgical act, how we are living through the various popular expressions. Isn't that unbelievable? In the end, the term will always be glory of God. It shall always be the exaltation and the salvation of man. That is to say, to live the life of God. And there are these historical cases between, of experience between the um, work of evangelization and culture. Paul VI clearly states in the evangelical exhortation in Book 48 that we need to be sensitive to popular relation, religion to understand its interior dimensions and to be willing to help those to overcome the risks of deviation. Because well guided, it can always do more and more for other people as a true encounter with God and Jesus Christ. This is how Evangelio Mistrandi clearly describes the values of popular religiosity. Our love and missionary zeal should lead us to encourage the Christian values of a popular religion, 
or an authentic popular religiosity because this is part, let's not never forget this, this is part of the heritage of the people. These authentic expressions of faith are an important part of the heritage of the Christian people and which precisely constitutes the basis of community. The document on liturgy in 61 to 64 clearly highlights the values which Evangelium Lucianzis mention by enriching them and integrating them into evangelization, catechesis, and the celebration of the divine mysteries. My friends, this people's religion is lived but preferably by the poor, as said in the same document. But it covers all social sectors. It's true, it's popular religion, but it's not a class religion. It is a religion of the ordinary people, but that doesn't mean the poor people. The people, the faithful people, are not satisfied by living faith in the brain, in abstract orthodoxy, orthodoxic dogmas. How much life we find in Philippines and in Mexico and in Americas in those religious expresses. The very living church, the church of colors, of savers, of song and of dance. We have seen the dance here on this very stage. They want to try and bring us right into our heart, this religiosity, these values. These are the values to whom we are called to support and to foment and encourage with the Evangel and the Eucharist. God Father, Christ Incarnation, Mary, Mother of God, God's salvations, Eucharist, sacraments. In fact, the holy water itself and candles themselves are important elements of this religiosity. The communion with the saints, the eternal life, and so forth. Therefore, my friends, those are the ones that hum these humanize our people. They dress them with intuitive imagination, with a sense of feast and of spectacle and of community participation. Those of you who know Mexico a little bit, you will see that an example of this is the Fiesta de Felifutus. That is to say, the feast of the defunct, of the dead. Mexico is the only one that celebrates, that makes a celebration of chocolate and sugar for the dead. That, in fact, produces these chocolate and sugar bodies. There's a whole feast, a whole fiesta on death, about death, precisely thinking of eternity. In some kind, these are the seeds of the verb, that is to say, communion with the saints. How different from the European concept of death. Oh, the Europeans, they cry, they dress in black. We come with our mariachis, our songs, our dance to celebrate our dead. That is popular religiosity, and I believe in Philippines too. When you go to bury one of your dear ones, you do it with fiesta and with song. That is the life of our people. And see how that encourages the mutual understanding between liturgy and piety, orthodoxy, and an interiorization of the people's faith. It is clear that this people's religiosity, well guided by, or by catechesis and evangelization, can bring a creative dynamism to Christian faith 
to the incarnation of liturgy among the ordinary people because of the symbolic wealth of it. This is in fact proven by the history of liturgy. On the other hand, in a current society, popular religiosity is also a gratifying reaction faced with an urban civilization, an industrialized civilization that standardizes and mechanizes life through technology and bureaucracy. It presupposes a religious alternative, a valid alternative that can save mankind from the depersonalized medium that he finds himself in. This is the document of Puebla. It states, and I quote, chapter 446, it is a way to live faith, which if correctly channeled, it represents a solidarity, a liberalizing solidarity, and a charismatic face to the God's love, to the encounter with their brothers and sisters, and with a poetic vision of creation. All of this is deeply evangelical, and it helps the evangelization process to make men and women more sons and daughters of gods in Christ and in the Spirit, more brothers and sisters in the community when they're baptized in the church than the church, and more missionaries and committed in the extension of God's kingdom. With regards to the importance of this popular religionist Bishop of Mar del Plata in Argentina, Le Lathelan, already mentioned about this. I'm sure some of you remember this well. When I went, he went to the Basilica of Guadalupe around the 1980s, Monsignor Eduardo Pironio, already in 1974, said, really RGT popular religious is a starting point. It's a starting point for a new evangelization process. I hope we don't lose sight of this, dear friends. Popular righteousness is a starting point for a new evangelization, understanding that this popular religion is the very physiognomy of the Latin American church and having as its treasure Our Lady. The uh, Bishop from Argentina said that America, Latin America had been evangelized under the sign of the Holy Mary and of the cross of Christ. While Pope Benedict the Sixteenth said, as he was inaugurating in Brazil a capital, there are two figures who have made men believe in Latin America. First, the Mother of God, and secondly, the God who suffers who also suffers all violence they themselves have experienced. The crucified Lord and the Virgin Mary are the closest expressions of the merciful love of God. And he continued saying, they symbolize inculturated evangelization, the popular faith belonging to the church and the cultural message. In 2011, Pope Ratzahin pointed out the treasure of our Catholic faith and stressed that it expresses the sense of belonging to the church and that she makes ourselves, the ecclesiastics, makes us fully integrate into the people of God. So, dear friends, the Congress participants, I would say that popular religiosity involves evangelizing all cultures to be in permanent dialogue and communion with them in line with the different Epis Episcopal conferences that follow the same path where man finds answers to basic and definitive questions that besiege him, and that is precisely where, in his religiosity, 
Juan Pablo II says in his inaugural statement in Puebla in 1979, the Pope said, religiosity of the people, popular religiosity, is a storehouse of values that offers answers of Christian wisdom to the great questions of existence. The popular Catholic wisdom and knowledge has a vital capacity to synthesize. It creatively, it carries a divine and the human. This wisdom is a Christian humanism that radically affirms the dignity of every person as a child of God. This establishes a basic fraternity, teaches people to encounter nature, understand work. It provides reasons for joy and humor, even in the midst of a hard life. That wisdom, the Pope ended by saying, Paul II, this wisdom is for the people also a beginning of the sermon, evangelical instinct, which it understood spontaneously when one serves the gospel in the church and when it is emptied it is stifled by other interests dear friends along these lines of thinking the poor suddenly appear those men and women who become the preferential or preferred option for the church because they are precisely the ones who live and express the popular faith in a truly live manner while they become the first recipients of the mission at the same time. The gospel of the mission. So they should be considered because of their faith as active evangelizing subjects. It's for this reason that the church must take the evangelizing potential of the poor as they constantly search, calling to conversion, and because many realize in their life the evangelical values of solidarity, service, and availability to welcome the gift of God. Therefore, as we have seen, it is a common doctrine of the magisterium of the church, that which in this regard I have been pointing out. As the beloved Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI notes in this regard that the soul of the Latin American people is born from the rich and profound popular religiosity, from the love for Christ, suffering Christ, the God of compassion, the God of forgiveness and reconciliation, the God who loved us and gave himself for us, the love for the Lord present in the Eucharist, in the sacred Eucharist, the incarnate God who died and risen, the Lord who is close to the poor and to those who are suffering, the devotion to the Blessed Virgin of Guadalupe from the Aparecida or to the various national and local titles. This religiosity is also expressed in devotion to the saints with their patron festivities, in love, of course, for the Pope. Mexican Filipinas, they, no one better than us in saying, long live the Pope. Quite truly. That's the way we are. The love for the Pope, for our Pope, the love for pastors of the church. What love, what devotion. The bishop, even we priests, they still kiss our hands. Although some of our brothers I just pull their hands away without realizing that that kiss in the hand is an expression of faith. 531. When he finds, meets with a virgin and his uncle is sick, he, she asks him, where are you going? Why are you so worried? 
my little daughter, my girl, this is your holy house to bring one of those who is the image of God. The priest, the image of God. Brothers, this was already in the doctrine of in the 16th century, and there's a doctrine of the Vatican II. How marvelous this is. So, dear friends, this is how this religiosity is lived marvelously in a sanctuary. A method of evangelization of the church to it's called upon to be an evangelizing tool. This is its duty in the world. This is its reason for being. Or even the saint, as Jesus Christ said, go throughout the world and preach the gospel to all the people. Do this, my disciples. Baptize them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Conscious, first of all, that the task is not ours, as we are only servants, useless servants, who have been called upon. And the same way that the Father has sent me, I'm sending all of you. It is not our task, our work, but of those who have sent us here. And we also carry out this work with a clear conscience that in our hands we have an enormous, a great treasure. To evangelize, we all know this quite well, is to let people know about Jesus, is to communicate the word of Jesus, is to ensure that our people finds Jesus and attaches to Jesus in a live way, not in a conceptual way, as we're told to be do. We have doctrines, dogmas, and the announcement, the rule, it's sort of left out when we talk about all of this. To evangelize is to talk about Jesus, and we want to give this to all the peoples. Jesus, the evangelist by excellence identifies himself especially with the smallest of people, with the poorest of people. And it's for this reason the pastoral socio caritativa pastoral which in the Basilica of Guadalupe, what we carry out in Mexico, this is we, what we force ourselves to do. It is a house of communion, of charity for the most needy of the world the houseless, the dependent drug users, immigrants, indigenous peoples, old people who are alone more often than not have been abandoned. This is what we do. This is the work that we do because this is what Guadalupe is all about together with the reconciliation, the sacrament. I'm here to listen to your worries. I'm here to listen to everything that bothers you and to cure all of your pains. And this is what Our Lady says that, well, that's what we have to do as part of our service to all the others. This is the new road to which Father Pope Francis is telling us to do as a church, a new evangelizing step marked by joy. In Tepeyac, we proclaim and show this little girl, Santa Maria de Guadalupe, Holy Mary Guadalupe, as an example. And she says it, I will give it to the people in all my personal love, in my pitying look, in my salvation. The message of Guadalupe is 100% Christ-centered. And the center is Jesus Christ, the center of this image, which was miraculously appeared in the mantle of Diego is our Lord Jesus Christ and that's why she's dressed by the sun with the moon beneath her feet and all the stars she has been penetrated by the Holy Spirit by the sun to let us know about that son of justice Jesus Christ she's a mother 
of our evangelizing church. And without her, we can no longer understand the spirit of evangelization. It comes out, we should come out of our comfort area, comfort point, and to seek the same as Jesus, those who have been, who are far away from the effects of the gospel. It is not these days to go for the lost lamb, but for all the others who have been lost. And it's not only the one uh, lamb that got away from us, it's a lot of them. And to become out of a comfort zone is to go and find their brothers and sisters and to find the same as Jesus, those who are far away, those who have been marginalized. And this is the integrated task of every individual. A miraculous image, and I finish with this. Evangelizes with eloquence. We can see Christ's gospel in her face and image. It is the essence of the good news, the belonging, and his love for the church. She was dressed with the culture of Anakwa. She took the elements of the Indian culture and added them to her persona. The songs, the earth, the skies, water, fire, everything. The sun, the moon, the stars, all of this, all of this which was profoundly in the world vision of our forefathers, our Indian forefathers. She Lady of Guadalupe is the same. It's the same virgin who, in another occasion, 1,500 years before, gave us our Lord Jesus Christ, who was born in Bethlehem, who walked to the Mount Calvary, the woman who presided through the Pentecost, and who in Mexico gave us to gave birth to Jesus Christ. She gave us bread of life and hope of glory. Her mestizo face, brown, the same as we all are, is another obvious sign of enculturalization. And the same of the Mount of Tepeyac, the historical date and the circumstances of her arrival. The Son of God, through his incarnation, also took on the elements of his culture and made of it a mythic event touching through uh, her presence, the deepest fibers of human reality. That is what the Holy Mary, this little girl, this mother, uh, the Holy Mary of Guadalupe did and has been doing for almost 485 years. Like her son, she has transcended borders, cultures, peoples, and customs. And this Filipino people could not be understood without the presence of this holy virgin. We evangelize using the popular religiosity and the pastoral, which is understood in this case as the co-responsible action of the whole people of God in its four dimensions, communion, announcement, mission, and celebration to reach all sectors and to reach all environments, especially those that are further away from the gospel. Our pastoral, our way of doing pastoral work responds to well-defined objective strategies and lines of action. In general, are well defined as far as their objectives, their general objectives, and their specific objectives, following an integral pastoral in which Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, gives cohesion, gives cohesion to the pastoral work as a whole. Our pastoral is strongly marked by the presence of Mary of Guadalupe, of Our Lady Mary of Guadalupe, affirming that there is a Marian style in the evangelizing activity of the church, that there is a school of the of Holy Mary to evangelize. 
Cardinal Don next Saturday will surely talk about this. A school of Marian. As Pope Francis pointed out, because each time that we look at Maria, we believe once again the revolutionary tenderness and affection. When I read this, I was emotional. I was citing what happened in Guadalupe. Every time we look at the Holy Virgin Maria, we believe again in the revolutionary aspect of her tenderness and charity. We see that humility are not virtues of the weak, but of the strong. That those who need not mistreat others to feel important. When looking at her, we discover that the same way that she praises God because he toppled the mighty from their thrones and he dispatched the rich with empty hands, this is precisely those who gives the warmth in uh, home in search of for justice. She's also the one who carefully preserves all things in her heart. It is a Christ-centered ministry founded in the Guadalupe event. Furthermore, this traditional way of doing ministry by the very nature of our sanctuary, perhaps unequivocally the most visited of the Christian world, as I previously pointed out, we carry out this specific pastoral of pilgrims and especially of training pastoral agents. All pastoral carried out in the Guadalupe sanctuary is geared for evangelization, to talk of God through the maternal, serene, peaceful, sweet and tender face of this little girl and Holy Mary of Guadalupe. We want to be, that's the, what my government tried to do in the Basilica of Guadalupe, we want to be the sweet face of the little virgin. How can we do this? Should we go to a parish and find us a sort of face? To be the face of Holy Mary Guadalupe, of a lady of Guadalupe, and with her to let all the people know about Jesus Christ, God himself, to whom we live to show and enhance the love and mercy of his son, Jesus Christ, who died and bringing to all growing communication and participation in the life of the church. In this effort, this represents a variety of cultures to each of our fellow pilgrims in the complicated human and spiritual situation in the distance from living the faith and a weak church membership. We strive to make resound the message of love and hope in Christ. We want to highlight in each of them the truth and the beauty of the gospel, the truth and the beauty of faith, of our faith, for there is nothing more beautiful than being, having been reached, surprised by the gospel, by Christ. Nothing more beautiful than to know him and to speak to others of our friendship with him, as Pope Francis has pointed out. I hope this reflection, dear brothers and sisters, that these words will open our eyes all the way to our hearts so as to understand the beauty, the greatness, the truth of the Catholic faith that our people live, our simple people live, faith in God, love, and Catholic tradition in the life and culture of our people are its greatest wealth. Together with Jesus Christ, who is the fullness of God's revelation, priceless treasure, the precious pearl, the word of God made flesh, the way, the truth, and the life of men and women to whom it opens the door to a destination full of justice and happiness. I hope it will allow us to remain faithful to the Catholic faith, to grow in our love for the Church of Jesus Christ, 
and to grow in the love and his mother Mary. Thank you very much. May God bless you and I entrust you to the care and maternal protection of Our Lady of Guadalupe. Thank you very much, very Reverend Monsignor Juan Fonte. Thank you for your spirited presentation, helping us to appreciate the people's popular expression of faith and to discover there in continuing discernment the jewels of our Christian faith. Thank you for inviting us to gaze at Jesus. Gracias por invitarnos para mirar a Jesús encarnado en esta devoción popular a Nuestra Señora de Guadalupe. At this point, we are opening the floor for questions or interpolations. En yes. este momento, si desean, pueden realizar preguntas, pueden acercarse a este micrófono en los pasillos para realizar sus preguntas a Monseñor. Con mucho gusto, si hay alguna pregunta. Buenas sí. tardes, Monseñor Diego. Hola, buenas tardes. Yo soy mexicana y he vivido en Filipinas los últimos siete años. Así es que muchas gracias por venir a visitarnos aquí para darnos esta conferencia. Mi pregunta es, eh, durante su conferencia, usted dijo... Dur during your meeting, you said that the source of spiritual, of popular spirituality is the, is, the, is the Virgin and that this is the starting point for new evangelization. Now, I am a member of the Renum Christi uh, group and I devote myself to this new evangelization. I think all of those here work towards that evangelization. And I would like to ask you, whether you could help us to uh, find out more about how to discover the voice of the Holy Spirit and how to encourage popular spirituality to go more deeper into this evangelization. Yes, indeed. The docu document uh, on liturgy is the one that tells us that the s source of lit popular religiosity is the um, gospel. We need to be able to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit in our present day, in our moment, in our culture, in our daily living, and not try to box it into a specific form of devotion. We don't, we don't have to love Christ through the devotion. We have to love him in our own hearts. And Adientes también also deals with this, uh, for instance, how in the places of vision, we, for instance, is the liveliness of this belief. It's the seeds of life that we find there. To be attentive to the movement of the spirit in these realities, these daily realities. And the other expression is that of Pope uh, Benedict XVI to be able to reach a new evangelization is important to be worthy of popular religiosity. There are so many. I don't have time to tell them all, but how through a whole liturgic, liturgic year, the crown, the, the, crown, the tree, the um, sanctifying of the images of the cradle, the, the etc. The various parts of the liturgy lead us to discover many things that um, 
Um, these various parts of the liturgy are marvelous elements to evangelize, to carry out this co-evangelization, as St. Paul II said, new in its expression, new in its strength and force. The content is always the same. Jesus Christ, yesterday, today, and always. My name is Fagner, I'm from Brazil. It was marvelous listening to you, Monsignor. In line with what our sister just said, I am also interested in the new evangelization process. I live in the Philippines, I've been living here for five years. You talked about religion, popular religion, and to go in depth into this popular religion. And also about the danger of trying that this popular religion falls into a sort of superstition. But linked with this point, what should we do? What sort of evangelization process, new evangelization, should we do to go in depth into this faith so that it's not only an expressive face of a faith of a folklore, but an adult faith, a faith that really is looking for the God who's resurrected. We cannot talk about folklore. Uh, it's part of the whole celebration. We must go to the gospel. So that's why I said it's so rich, this popular religion, that we have to purify it, strengthen it. We have to raise it to another level. And the document says to develop popular religion. How do we develop this popular religion? Through the expressions lived by the people during the whole of the year. That's what it's important. It's not simply two action lines. On the one hand, the institutional line drawn by the church, and on the other side, that of the people. I think we should link these two. It's, we must integrate them. They must become one. To have a sensitivity to get into the world vision of the people. Sometimes we don't understand them. But as Mary says, I don't understand it, but it's in my heart. I keep this voice of God in my heart. And I am sure that she understood everything finally. This is what we have to do. Don't underestimate anyone or underestimate anyone. And the priest will say, no, we have to do away with all this. No, this is a challenge that we're facing. It's a dialogue. Find yourself. This is the best way of doing this. Find yourself. God is a dialogue. God is communion. And we, as Juan Diego, the uh, Indian said, dialogue and communion, dialogue, the engagement has to be a strong engagement within us. And then the last documents who talked to us about dialogue with cultures, with the diverse cultures that exist. Good afternoon, Father Russell Mantiles from Davao in Mindanao here in the Philippines. Mexicans and the Filipino people have something in common. We're great devotees. Mexican, you have the Virgin of Guadalupe, and we have El Santo Niño. You talked about the importance of popular religion, or the threat, is, which is superstition. But it's also difficult, in my experience, the difficult thing is to differentiate between a true devotion and how this is different from a superstition. From your experience in the Basilica of Our Lady of Guadalupe, how can we differentiate a true devotion from superstition? How can we tell them apart? Yes, in culturalization is a very important challenge. And 
we have to know our people very well. We have to know their culture. But in particular, if our people cooperate, we can avoid that they fall into superstition. If we are there present with our people, and a real pastor, a real parisher, he goes, he drives along, and with all of his community on top of his truck, and not the one who says, is outside, and says, be careful, be careful, danger. No, we don't achieve anything like that. We have to drive our truck with the people on top of the truck, and you have to drive it wherever you go, your people will go with you. To accompany a people is basic. It's essential. To avoid, to avoid this enormous risk, and that's why it's still a challenge today. All of these popular manifestations. Two weeks ago, I was impressed when I saw the cult of the El Nino in Manila. It's uh, impressive to see the Siapo. It's uh, celebrated for the Eucharist, and there were very strong experiences with these brothers and sisters in Manila. But to be there, to participate, to be there with them is fundamental. Not simply to say, come to my house, do whatever you like, and I will help you. No, I will go with you. I will accompany you. I will go with you hand in hand. And this is when the tree bears fruit. And that's when we are really living a church that is alive. Uh, liturgy that is living and we have a feeling of solidarity because all of this is related, is co-related. Uh, real devotion, real cult always leads to fraternity, living together, meeting uh, brethren, all of the positive factors. The processions, the groupings, all of this. Thank you very much once again. May God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you very much for allowing us to journey further in our faith. We would like to end with a prayer. Before that, may we remind everyone to please return the receiver headsets to the booth at the left side of the stage. Thank you. May we request everyone to open their program on page 11 as we end this day's activities in the pavilion. Page 11. <laughs> 